Hey guys, I'm Aaron Edgar. On behalf of Drums Etc. Magazine, this is my bonus video on snare drum tuning. So, let's get right to it. So, let's just start from scratch here. We have a 14x7 Ascent Sonar snare drum. And, well, let's start by putting the head on. So, we're going to take a fresh head. It's an Evans G1 coated. Now, I always like to line it up with the badge. I know it doesn't really matter, but if you're going to be taking the head off and possibly putting it back on later, this means that it's going to seat to the bearing edge the exact same way because you have a reference point on where it was in the first place. So, let's stick the hoop on. After you've placed your hoop and lined up all your tension rods, one of my best friends in tuning drums, especially lots of drums, is the Evans Drill Bit Key. It makes twisting those tension rods, which takes forever when you have to do a lot of stuff, a much less annoying job because it'll do it in a few seconds. I'm going to just take these up to slightly before where they touch, so there's not going to be any tension placed on the head here. Alright, so now we have the tension rods almost to where they're touching the head. Now I've always liked to tune with two keys, but if you're new to this, you might want to do these one at a time. We're going to take each tension rod down just so it barely makes contact. We're not going to add any tension, it's just going to be touching. Now if you can't feel it, you'd be better off to just use your eyes. That way you can see when it touches the hoop and it gets contact. I'm just going to zip ahead and do this. All right, so now we have all the tension rods touching, but there's no tension on the head. They're just barely making contact. One thing to note for this stage of the game, personally, I always like to keep my drum on a surface where it's going to mute the opposing head. So as you can see, I have mine on a drum stool, not a snare stand. So, nothing going on there. One thing that's good if it's a new head is to stretch it. So. There's conflicting views on this. Uh, some people like to do it, some people don't. I find when you stretch the head, it detunes less when you come down to actually play it. Now all that means is you're just going to take it up higher than you would normally do it. So I like to give each tension rod a full turn. And then just see where we're at. These ones are lower, so we're going to tip them up together. There we go. Now, I still want it higher because we're stretching it out. So let's do it again. Now, you may have noticed a little bit of cracking and popping sounds while this was happening. That's just the glue that holds the head to the counter hoop releasing a little bit. It's normal. It's not anything breaking. There's nothing going on that's bad. Just expect to hear that. It's, a, it's fine. Now, we have it tensioned up. An important thing is to make sure that all the lugs are still even. They're in tune while it's tensioned up. If you're tensioning it up and it's not even, sometimes that can throw it off and when you turn it down to, to tune the drum, the head ends up kind of wonky and you can kind of ruin it a little bit. So, we've done that. We've stretched it. You can even press on it a little bit. Let's slack it back off, start from scratch, and actually tune this thing. Okay. So let's start from the same place. We're going to take the tension rods to just where they're touching. There's going to be no tension put on the head yet. You might want to refrain from dropping your drum keys. All right, now it's time to actually tension it up. Let's go with a half turn each, and we're going to go in a star pattern. So I just did point one. We're going to each skip two, skip up to two. Now we're going to do two, and we're going to skip again. And then same thing again. One more time and we got them off. Now see where it's at. This one's much lower, so let's tension it up a bit. It's a little low. Now a lot of the time it doesn't take much of an adjustment, like we're talking maybe that. That sounds pretty good. Let's ballpark it. But before we do that, we should see what the bottom head's all about. 
Now an important thing to note about the bottom head is that there's a flattened section called the snare bed where your wires sit. They help the wires seat a little bit more flat. Now with that being said, you can't perfectly tune your snare bed on the bottom side because I mean the bearing edge isn't completely flat so you can't tune it exactly how you would tune the top. These ones end up a little bit tighter. Now it's not a huge difference. Personally I always like my snare side head higher pitched than my top head for that white noise crackle sizzly kind of thing. So now it's time to ballpark where we're at. We tuned up the top head and we talked about what to do with the bottom head. So let's put it all together. Let's see what that sounds like. Actually sounds pretty good right off the hop. No need to mess with that. Now let's talk about moon gel. For this particular snare, I'm going to use a single quarter piece. So if we pictured, like, say this was my piece of moon gel, I'm just going to cut up these and have one quarter of it. I'm going to put that just right on the top of the Evans logo. So pretty much touching the A this way. Now, that sounds a little dead to me, so let's move it back a little bit. Let's put it a little closer to the edge. So this is in between the Evans logo and the very edge. It's about three millimeters from the actual edge of the snare head. That sounds a little better. Now, one really cool thing to note is that where your moon gel is placed in relation to your microphone makes a massive difference. So what I was hearing here is probably different to what you guys are hearing on the track. So let's put the exact same moon gel position but in relation to the microphone and hear how that changes the sound. Now this sounds exactly the same to me up here, but it's going to sound very different on the track. Let's move it a little further away from the mic and see how that fits. So it's interesting the way that Moon Gel affects different overtones and different ways of muffling the drum based on where it is on the head and based on where it is in relation to the microphone. You'll have to experiment with that to really find your sound on the snare drum. So let's try just a couple different things with this before we get going. We're going to pitch it way up, grab our drum keys. See what that sounds like. Now for that, moon gel I think is too much. We want a little bit more ring out of it for that. Cool. Now let's try the alternate. Let's tune it way down. One thing you're going to notice, I needed less moon gel on the way up. On the way down, you're going to need more, because when you tune your drum lower, there's a lot more overtones to deal with. Go down. cool sounding but there's a lot of ring to deal with. So for this I'm actually going to use a little bit more moon gel. I'm going to take two of those quarter pieces and I'm going to place them as if the middle 50% had just been removed. Now, as we had demonstrated before I'm going to put that in relation to the microphone. A little much.
Now, if you want to go really fast, you can take a trick that I learned from Benny Greb. This, again, will probably require even more muffling than we just put on. The three tension rods closest to you, where you would be doing your rim shots. So you hit your rim shot, these three. Back them almost completely off. Now the cool thing is, is that this puts the snare drum wildly out of tune. But, a lot of times for the snare drum, especially with that really fat, old school, just puh kind of sound, we're going for almost a white noise anyway. So it not being perfectly in tune, honestly, isn't really a problem. But, like I said, you definitely need more muffling.